If you've been looking for some extra design polish on your app, look no further than this video as we see scrolling down here and the title of this video that told you yes. We're going to look at what it is to set up parallax scrolling effect in Bubble. To kick things off, I'm going to show you first the setup over in Bubble and then also really mo the majority of this video is going to be about how to build SVG files that can give you like nice backgrounds. So basically the way to set up a parallax effect in Bubble and uh, note it is done for the home page, sorry, the desktop version only. Uh, so here I am on this page, Homer, this example home page. And what I've done is I have added an image as the background style. Stats step number one, select an image and add one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add, I've played around with this quite a bit, and I'm gonna add something that um, is not an SVG. So let's just take one of these and let's go out and take a look at that. The thing that I've noticed when it's not an SVG, you often get like a little bit of a uh, pixelated feel to, to things when it's looked at closely. Now, uh, to avoid that, because we can even see here, it's just, it just, uh, it could be the quality of this image, but then you also run into, you know, issues of having larger file sizes, which increases load time. So I'm going to get us past all of that. And actually, you know, that image, that's not even the worst of it. Here is what happens when you add a parallax effect. Bubble is going to take the background image and it is going to stretch that background image. So right now the background image is being stretched from the top all the way down to the bottom and anything on the sides is basically being cut out from view. That's that's how Bubble does it. It takes the page itself, everything on it, and that's the decision that it's make. It hasn't given us any control over that. Um, it has given us control over the speed. Uh, I like 0.3.4. It'll give 0.2 out of the box. And so let's take a look at that. So 0.2 is, is just slower. Um, but play around with whatever uh, suits your fancy. But so now let's take a look at um, getting some uh, different types of SVGs on here. Okay, so here's one. And again, it kind of doesn't matter if it's centered or not. Bubble's going to do its own thing when you have that option checked. But here we can see this is an SVG. And we can see the edges are so much more sharp. Um, what I want to point out is that Typically, parallax effects, you know, if you look at all the designs out there, well, you are looking at stuff where there is like a breakup. Uh, so here we have this group and it is 100% fill. It's just a normal color. Same with this group here. And then you can also have stuff that, well, these are filled and then anything not filled is that's that's what will show through. So you can kind of sculpt your uh, experience uh, of things. And, you know, you can see here that's not the greatest um, so, so we would probably want to put like a 40%, um, you know, opacity, something or other, or, or 80% play around with it. Uh, but now we're going to shift gears and I'm going to show you how to basically find these SVG, SVG files and what you can do. So, um, here is a site called hero patterns, HeroPatterns.com, And basically it has a ton of these patterns. And then I went to a few other ones. This one is every pixels pattern, every pixel.com forward slash patterns. Uh, the URL is just, you know, it's not being shown in the thing here. And then uh, another one, another good one is this SVG backgrounds. And then if you just start to search for SVG background on Google, that's what led me to all of this stuff. Here we can see some freebies. Here is a free SVG background area. And we can take a look at some of these and you know see what it's going to kind of look like now next up the last thing we're going to look at is this tool called boxy.svg.com and just head over here launch the app and so let's go and do that and it'll prompt you to create a free account when you try and export it um but you can at least start to edit things because that's so our our goal again is to set up a parallax effect over in bubble something that looks cool and is lightweight, doesn't bog down the page. In order for it to look cool, I highly, highly recommend using SVG. SVG. 
not that many of us are super familiar unless you come from a design background on how to create and edit those. So that's why we're taking the time here to basically look at this uh, little app and you know see what we can do with it. So um, I'm gonna go with this, I think this one's kind of fun, this I like food pattern. So I'm just gonna go use pattern, download that, and that's gonna give me a uh, I like food one here which I can just then go and drop into this area. Now, let's see, the, the I'm gonna show off some tips here. So basically, we actually don't need this white square, although I'm not sure I can delete it, but so let's let's see what we, uh, what we wanna do here. You'll recall that how Bubble handles these um, background images, whether SVG or JPEG or PNG or whatever, it is that it will take the size of the page that you're working with and imagine if I, if I had a really, I don't know, if my page was only this long or something like that, then I would probably want a vertically, you know, oriented uh, background image. But if I have a really, really long page, which is the case of my page, it's quite long, then I want a more vertical one because right now the top of the, that SVG file and the bottom of the SVG file is like I like shared before, that's what's being stretched out. So I'm just reminding us of how we want to create this. And so now, so that be, all being said, uh, the way that SVGs basically work is that they just repeat over and over again. Um, and so that's that's kind of what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to attempt to uh, line these up as best I can by copying pasting these and just kind of laying them out here and you know kind of creating creating the SVG that uh, I would like to have and I think I'll do four of these because that's roughly about how my page is set up so those all look pretty good and remember these things are going to be all so far apart in terms of how they are seen um, on the page that we're probably pretty good here Actually, you know what? My page is really long, though. I just want to see this because then we get to see more items, which is cool to me. Um, and once you have all of this set up, how you want it, on the right-hand side here, head over to Export. And so View is selected and SVG is selected. So that's great. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to head on here in the bottom left, second to the bottom left, and there's View. And we're going to take this view. Oh, yeah, that's why this thing is there. It was just the view. It wasn't. Um... It wasn't there to be deleted. It was just hanging out there to be used. OK, so I'm going to line this up roughly about here ish. And then I'm going to drag. Drag this down. So the goal is just to capture all the stuff here. And then it's going to take everything that's inside of here and turn it into an SVG for us. So that's looking good. Uh, it is not necessary to be exactly pixel perfect. So next up is I'm going to hit this export button, which, uh, and so then here's our SVG. So I've got this untitled space four. And that's the one that I'm going to drop into here. We can see this nice long-ish one. And then now let's check out, you know, what we got here. So that's pretty cool. Um, we can see that we could probably make those things even smaller if we wanted to, because here's our SVG size. Um, we could also repeat a few of those and export them. But I also want to point out the file size on this SVG. So that's 49 kilobytes. Um, this scattered force fields, geez, that's one. Uh, but actually, let's see, the final scattered one is five. Five kilobytes, that's so lightweight, it's insane. So um, really, that's the that's the route you probably want to, that is the route you want to go, is using an SVG. And I, you know, I think this one works the best for what I'm doing here on this particular page. This page is all about creating art and um, it's got these nice shapes, which are, uh, you know, work really nicely with that. So uh, there you have it. 
If you like this video, give it a like or subscribe to the channel for more great tips. And that is how you do parallax effects in Bubble. Thanks for watching.